You couldn't do that if you were a believer in the kingdom of God. If you were the believer in Jesus Christ, you lived a different lifestyle. Your life showed that you were a holy person. Your life showed that you were a separated person. Your life showed that you believed in what the Bible said. There had to be a separation. Separation from what the world lived, and to them, the world was the political, religious world. And so that was something that was powerful to them. The I, E-A-S-I, stands for involvement of the brotherhood. They believed that the Bible taught that you need to take care of your brother and sister. 1 John 3, uh, 16 and 17, for instance. N stands for non-resistance. They did not fight. Have the Mennonites contributed to society? Yes, we have. The bank barn. That's Swiss German. Yeah, Swiss German. But it's Mennonite. They brought it over. Uh, the Hans Herr House. If you've never been down there, Willow Street, go see it. The reason is this is probably the biggest and strongest house in the area. And so where would you go if you're going to be defenseless and need some place to hide? You're going to go to where you're going to have protection. I don't know. I often wonder what was in John Light's mind and his heart as a Mennonite, probably bishop or minister. But yeah, we we brought a lot of good. The whole mental health field. Who pioneered that? Yeah, it comes out of World War II and the one W boys and young ladies and the service that they did and the health care that has come out about has come out of that. Education, Christopher Dock from uh, down in uh, toward Philadelphia he was one of the great pioneers of education in the early 70s before the French and Indian War. A great educator. His name is carved into the education building up in Harrisburg. Uh, we've contributed a lot. Open heart surgery was uh, one of the uh, heart surgeons in York Hospital, on Martin. It's one of the ones that helped to uh, pioneer that and to get that going. It's a lot of contributions from us as a people, even though we might seem strange at times. Love us. We love you. And not to remove the boundary stones or the historical markers that were given to them because they, the children would ask, why is that stone there? Or why is that building there? And then God said, Moses, tell them. We have, this will be here as a memento to tell the present and future generations of the people that came to this land and what they did. So may God bless you as you do that. We'll have a couple more songs. And then we'll... Stites, Gloninger, all those gentlemen bought their land from this Casper Wistar. Our warranty deed for this property is signed by William Penn's sons, which I think is a really worthwhile artifact to have. I don't think any of these gentlemen envisioned these as forts, but because they were on the frontier, because the French were even then, in the 1740s, inciting the Indians, and because there was a Quaker government in Philadelphia who also are non-confrontational, they could depend on nobody but themselves. So you built your house as strong as you could, and apparently Johann had money because he bought 287 acres of land, and he built a very strong, very large house for that time. And you fortified it. You put some kind of stockaded fence around it. There was never any fighting here. There was actually never any fighting in the city of Lebanon during the French and Indian War. There was a skirmish over near where Southeast School mountains, and they attacked the settlers when they were out in their fields, plowing, planting, harvesting. The Indians weren't stupid. They weren't going to take one hundreds of people. They attacked you when you were out. They killed the men <coughs> and the older boys. They generally captured the women and the children. In the, from the writings, we have up to 60 families could shelter here at one time. But that doesn't necessarily mean oh my goodness. It means maybe in the old oh marriage. That's one thing I'm going to say. Well, her Esther, it wasn't a problem. Uh, she I just, she, I just she went broke through the basement. <laughs> she did. One more place, place very full. Uh, until we fixed the walls, this was the biggest birdhouse.
in Lebanon County. <laughs> it's exactly as you said, Reverend. This, this is an important part of our history. If we lose this house, we've, been, we've had a habit in America, we rip things down when they get old. And then you lose something when you do that. We need to keep this history, we need to remember it, and we envision this as an educational center for children and adults, a tourist attraction. This could be a valuable thing because we were Swiss Germans who came here, and we were mostly plain religions of one type or another. Now, <coughs>